Okay, here we go again. Okay, so here's the start. And that's Jason right in the center. With Jake and Ryan Stanky on the other side. So now we're hitting, you know, 500 watts, just trying to get into the single track. So Jason, what were you thinking here when they're starting to put in little digs right immediately? Yeah. I mean, you know, we kind of used to that from racing cross country. The starts are always really hard. And, you know, like I said, Ryan's been going out really hard in all of the races all season, you know, the cross country races. And I figured it would be as bad as that, if not worse, with Jake there. Um, and, you know, he's, the, he's the, one of the fastest guys around. He, he would have won the cross country race um, most likely. So it, it was really just a goal just to, to get out in front of the larger group. You know, even if I was third, fourth, fifth, sixth, even, you know, um, going into the, the tight single track, that was kind of the goal was just to get, get out of there. Yeah, yeah and, and it's from the start, it's 2% corner and then yeah into three four five percent right so that's a pretty intense high effort start regardless yeah yeah the start's always really hard um you know you get in a good rhythm off the pavement and then it, you know you know i think i probably got a little bogged down you know a little too difficult of a gear into that first turn and got bogged down and then you saw how jeff you know moved, moved past him then yeah, at this point, I'm just trying to get up to Ryan because I'm thinking if I can be with him, he can set the pace. But Jake just lit it up. You know, I think it was a surprise to all of us when Jake signed up for the endurance because I believe this is his first one he's done this year. And yeah. like Jason, I mean, he's just crushing it in the XC. So <laughs> we, we knew he was going to be winning this one, right? Yeah, and I, I by no means, you know, know Jake really at all. I, I remember his name. Uh, his name for the first time years ago he won the turkey hill road race um that was i think the first time that i um knew of his name and then just over the years knew that he was doing some big pretty big things on the road bike um but i i did know that he was going to be likely signing up for the endurance race um i had just heard through a friend that he was he was likely for the endurance race so. yeah yeah so yeah, I mean, we're just getting started here and I'm already at 163 heart rate and my max is 171. So we are, we are not holding back. I mean, this is gonna be a four hour race and we're already at basically a threshold. Yeah, and at this point, I'm, I'm pretty close behind you, maybe a little bit back and um, kind of just happy to be there. You know, just Let's just get, just get started, you know? Mm -hmm. You can see on this downhill, we hit 27, 27 miles an hour. To a and we turn this corner. Turn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. The, the conditions changed throughout the day. That became faster and faster. Right. Um, because the night, night Ryan, before was a lot of rain, right? The, the night before the race. Local, but a lot of rain, I believe. I, yeah, I think you're right. And there was just, it, it was 8 a.m., so there was a lot of dew mm -hmm. on, the, on the course. Yeah, I don't know if the court saw any of that rain that you, you mentioned, Jerry, but right. um, it's it's um, because of just the, the, the venue, it always has a way of being a little slippery in the morning with the grass or, um, you know, some of the rocks seem like they always have a little bit of like, uh, you know, sweat on them almost in the woods. So right. it's always <clears throat> tricky conditions. Okay, so here comes Nelson. This guy is awesome. He is an endurance beast. I mean, I think everyone has mad respect for this guy. Yeah. Um, not only because he rides a pink bike, and uh, you'll see <laughs> in the video, he has a he has a pink unicorn little horn on his handlebars, which is uh, yeah. it's kind of next level. Yeah, Nelson's a great guy, and I actually, as we started, and I took that first turn. I actually was thinking to myself, you know, I didn't even see Nelson around the, the start. I wasn't even sure if he was even there. And then um, next thing I know, he was passing me at the top of that grass to get around, um, um, you know, you and I. And, you know, in the trip, well, I was like, oh, I, I, guess, I guess he's here. 
Yeah. <laughs> so already, I mean, he's yeah, a good and, you know, like, he's, like he's said, Jeff, he's a, a super strong guy. And he's in the same yeah. um, um, age group, or was he also 45 plus? He was racing the open. The open. But yeah. I believe he's, I think he's my age. He's like 49, right? No, I think, uh, I'm not sure exactly how, I think he's like 43, 44. He's around my age, I think, Jeff. I don't, I don't know if he's more than 44 or 45. Okay. You can see right here, look at we're at 350 watts, 400, 490. So, I mean, all day long, you know, it's a four hour race and we're really not dipping below 300 with any kind of effort. Um, and you'll see right up here, we cross the road, we start to ease up a little bit and then Jason comes around us. So <laughs> it's like, there, there's no uh, easing back, even in a four hour race. You know, I and this was like one of those things where, um, you know, I knew my goal for the day was to get like three, four hard laps in and maybe try to get some separation and then, and then settle in, right. Get by myself, settle in, see what happens, try to break the group a little bit. Um, and I've raced Nelson a bunch, cycle across mountain bikes. And I know kind of what I'm good at and what he's good at. And he's so strong that if you let him dictate the pace, He'll just grind you up into little pieces throughout the day. So I wanted to get in front of him and try to apply some pressure in the trail sections that are more like, you know, bike handling uh, type of areas. So that's what I was trying to do here. So I knew here, I was like, J uh, Jason's going to be really fast at this. So Nelson needs to stay on him. And I was kind of keeping it in check. Like if Nelson starts to drift, I'm just gonna have to come around to keep up on Jason's pace. And he's doing pretty good through here. I don't think he pre-rode the course, so it was he wasn't taking the fastest lines, but it was still early in the race, so I'm just gonna let him kind of dictate. Yeah, like I kind of wish you were on behind me uh, through that turn because I, I definitely went into that hard left a little too hot and um, had a pretty nice little slide <laughs> around that turn. Um, it looked like it caught, you know, caught Nelson on a little bit as well. Yeah. So right here, I know that this next single track section is, is tough. And you know, generally at, at Grenogue in the past, I've had some success with kind of riding the easy sections easy and the hard parts hard. Um, so I'm kind of just recovering a little bit, you know, through here and then getting ready to, to go as hard as I, almost, almost as hard as I possibly can for a little while um, through the trail. Yeah, you'll see the gradient on the, on the right. So we're only at four or 5% here. It's not bad, but it's rooty, it's right. technical, all leading up to the climb. So you don't really carry any momentum. And now you start hitting this punchy stuff. So like right here was, it was deceptively steep. Where it was it for? Yeah, and the GoPro, this is a little bit of a lag, right? So eight, yeah. nine, 10, 11, yep, 12. There we go, 11, 12 there. The, the trail conditions were about as good as they get at Grenoble. They were, they were great all day. Mm -hmm. Did a good job, um, horse prep. And it wasn't ridiculously hot either. It was, it was humid, but it wasn't oppressively hot. What, what tires were you running and tire pressure? So I, I was testing out my setup that I'm going to use at Wilderness 101 next weekend. So I was using Max's Aspen 2.4 front and rear um, at pretty low pressure. I had about 14 and a half in the front and like 15 and a half in the back. Yeah, this is another steep climb. See, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So later... Later on in the race, there was they had squirt guns and they would hose you down, hmm. which was which was great. But then 
you, your whole kit would just get so wet. It was like, you just had a, it felt like you had a diaper on that was full, you know, and <laughs> it'd take you half a lap for all of that to get out of you. And then, then you come back through and they do it again. This kind of surprised me. Um, Cause I, you know, I, I could still hear, you know, hear people behind and wasn't really turning around too much, but I, I was kind of surprised. It looked like, you know, I got away a little bit from here, um, which, yeah. which kind of surprised me a little bit when I watched the video. Yeah, at this point, I wanted to start calling out to him, like, you could take these faster, because right up here is the, kind of the high point, and then it's the downhill from here, but he was a little too careful on the downhills. So right here, we could just see you rolling away. You can just open it up. I mean, we're hitting 19 miles an hour. There's a log over here. And then you come out to this field and then this should be just full gas. But uh, you can see yeah, at this just, point, I'm, I'm turning it into the woods, kind of yeah. off, off the, the trail quite a, quite a ways away at this point. Yeah, this is what made me think like he didn't rewrite the course because even this tunnel right here was a surprise to him. You can see he almost crashes in the wall. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then there's a little bridge here, which I don't think he knew. He was a little timid on that. And then there, there we see Jason right up there. So it felt like we were kind of yo yo in there for a while. Yeah. And <clears throat> At this point, like I, I'm like, okay, I'm a little got a little bit of a gap, but you know, just try to just settle in. So I'm, I'm not really riding that hard at this point. I'm, I'm just kind of motoring along at you know like a tempo pace. Um, I'm kind of getting ready ready for the next section. Really um, happy happy with the little bit of gap that I was able to get. This is your first time on your new bike, right? Yeah, so it's first time on the new bike, testing it out. You know, just get a feel for it. It was good. I was I was pretty happy with how how it performed for a little bit. Yeah, Jeff, you're still at uh, one sixty sixty four. So mm -hmm. at threshold the whole time, right? Yeah, I mean, you could see like every time we're doing three four hundred watts just on these. And I, I looked and I mean, uh, after the race, you know, I was, I only did, you know, like four laps, two hours, something total, but I looked at my training peaks data after the race and I actually had an all time personal best for both 60 minute and 90 minute hour, um, which I was pretty surprised. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of coasting as well, but when you're, when you're pedaling, <laughs> you're pedaling hard at, at Grenoble. Yeah. For sure. uh, yeah. And there's always some lag time for your heart rate to get down, and and also for you, uh, Jeff, your your heart rate, you know, you, you set multiple records, <laughs> um, especially in the uh, the longer efforts, um, but it also might have to do with some being somewhat rested because you were on the, under the weather um, that usually has a positive influence on your heart rate. Yeah, yeah. I looked at after afterwards. I did hit my max heart rate of 171 on the climb. We'll we'll see that. I took the steeper climb at the end, but I had two hours and 57 minutes at threshold, right? And seven seven and a half minutes over threshold, and only 59 minutes under, which you assume would be just like the downhills and stuff like that. So really, if we were pedaling, we were at threshold for the whole time. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah, so you can see like this is what, there's a 12, 13% climb in the woods here. This comes out on like a steep grass climb. So you get to the top here and you think you can recover <laughs> and you really are just setting up for the real climb. So you can see it's a little downhill. You think, okay, we're over. 
and I come here and we can see Jason ahead, and it's like now is when you need to really put in the effort. Yeah, so I, 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 I try to I try to put a pretty big dig in through through here, knowing that there was a downhill after, you know, you, you had some time to recover. Right. But man, this this grass this grass climb really gets to you after a while, especially if it's hot. Yeah. Seven laps up this thing. <laughs> And they got the music crank in. <laughs> and then this was great. They handed out these cups of water. I think they expected us to drink them, but you just throw it over your head. And it was like, oh, just see the five unicorn. Watts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's the unicorn. So again, I, I was trying to wait and let him lead this, but I don't think he was familiar with the downhill. Because Jason, you were just you were putting gaps on us on every technical section. Yeah, I mean, I, I when I when I looked um, later, it looked like I had about I don't know, or maybe twenty five or twenty six seconds at the entry to the Waymount Wood section, which we can call out when we get to it. And then I think you passed Nelson around the beginning of Waymount as well, so you held the gap to me once you got around Nelson. But up until that point, I was kind of nibbling away, getting a little further and further away at every every technical trail section. Yeah, and we've, we raced with Nelson, what was it, three weeks ago at Challenger? Mm -hmm. And it was a group of Ryan Stanky Nelson, Jason, and I, the four of us just motoring along. And whenever we come out to an open section, Nelson would just light it up like 500 watts sprints out of every, on, onto every flat section. Right. So I was kind of expecting the same, but at some point I just had to make the decision to pass them. So that turn is so loose. <laughs> yeah. Every time, even when you know it's coming, it Yeah, so now we're in the, the technical river trail. I never, really feel like I, I never feel like I ride this section of the trail well. Um, it's either I'm either trying to recover or, um, uh, you know, I get going fast, then maybe a, a turn kind of cut, catches me out where I'm in too big of a gear. Or I, I just don't feel like I ever ride this section of the trail very good. Yeah. And you got this U-turn here. Another one. That got me the first time, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's where the DI2 helps. You can just hold the button, just go all the way up, like I said. <laughs> so did you have any secrets for nutrition for this race, Jason? Um, I've been trying to experiment a little bit with, um, you know, with knowing that it was going to be hot. I, I picked up some like sodium and electrolyte stuff that I tried to like sip on throughout the day. And I drank some the night before. And, you know, obviously I always have like a big, you know, carbohydrate rich meal the, the day before, um, like, you know, night before and, you know, throughout the day, um, just kind of loading up, but really no, no secrets really. I've been, um, using the same drink mix i've been using the martin products um this year and i've had pretty good luck with them um i find that they don't they're not the best when it's really hot with um cramping they don't have really there's not really any sodium in the martin stuff um right. so when it's really hot i have to mix like one bottle of drink mix with and then another bottle with water in it uh, with like noon um but on this day, I just ran um, all drink mix. I didn't have any water with noon in it. And then supplementing with gels. Just part of the prep that I've been trying to do for these longer NUE races, and just trying to just see just how much I can eat um, on the bike, you know, per hour. You know, a bottle of, bottle of drink with a gel, you know, every hour was my, was my goal for the day. And it seems to work pretty well. Yeah. Are you then at um, 60 or, or even higher? Like per hour, um, the, per hour? 
I think the drink by itself is 80 oh. and then the gel is another 20 or so. Yeah. Okay. So, so you're close to a hundred per, per hour. Yeah, or I, yeah. yeah. Per hour. Um, and I don't seem to have any trouble with it. I mean, Jeff knows I train my body to eat donuts on bike rides all winter long. So <laughs> yeah. um, I do pretty well with those. So. Yeah. So at that point we get out onto this single track and I'm like, okay, I, I got to pass them. My heart rate had dropped to like 150. We were doing like under 200 watts through that section. And I was like, we got, we got to pick this up. So this is a little, this is just a little technical, not too crazy, but it opens up at the bottom after you cross the bridge. And then I was like, okay, now it's time to reel in Jason or try to. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you held the gap. I mean, you, I didn't get any further away once um, once you got around. I, I looked at the, the Strava, you know, after looking at the video, and I looked at Strava, um, at least in terms of our, our personal best lap, which I'm assuming was probably either your first or second, or my, you know, probably both of our second laps, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah, my fourth lap was my fastest, okay. but, um, but a second, third, and fourth were all very close within one minute of each other. Okay. Yeah. So maybe so, maybe my review wasn't wasn't one hundred percent. I don't think you can do Strava flyby anymore. I, I wanted to look at that, but I think they got rid of that. Oh, you, can, you, you actually can. You can. Yep. So you see, I'm hitting like six hundred, going up this six hundred watts. I'm back up at one sixty two, one sixty three heart rate. So now this is the one with uh, climb, right? Or the yeah, it's the start of it, yep. The lead up to it. So why mouth woods, yeah. So it's not too bad at the bottom, but it definitely gets spicy at the top. And like you said, Jason, I mean the conditions were perfect. It was yeah. not sticky, it was great traction. I was running two point three five uh fast tracks with uh 20 psi in the rear and 18 in the front because i just didn't want to run any risk any flats or anything yeah through here you know it's like you kind of if you've raced there before you know what's coming so it's like you yep. don't go full gas through here by any means because you know that you you can't be at the at the red line when you get to this what's coming up where it gets it's really steep and technical. Yep. Yeah, there's nothing straightforward about this. It's little step ups, rocks, roots the whole way. So they make you work for it. You're constantly making little adjustments, micro adjustments, you know, back pedal for a little bit, pedal forward, like just to get up over things. You got this little step up here. Insult to injury right there. Yeah. <laughs> but you're you're basically uh, three, four hundred watts on every little uphill. Yeah, like you said, this is only lap one of seven, right? You did seven, uh, Jeff. Yep, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And we got you know faster. I'd say the first four laps we were getting faster every every lap. I kind of took a wide line there. It wasn't great, but I was like, just get through it without dabbing. Yeah, I, I took the more of the inside line, and the one time I actually my back tire slid out. I actually put my hand, my right hand on that rock and like was able to keep going without dabbing. I'm surprised I was able to, to keep you moving. Nice. So yeah, it's funny to say with this, yeah, it's funny to say with this 11% part of the climb is almost like recovery after that little rock move and then knowing what you got to come coming up. So they do warn you right here, rocks, rocks ahead. ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And um, this line has changed over the years. So you want to take that right and then 
you know, you almost go off course and then you just straighten it up and then go right up the climb. Yeah, years ago, you used to just like come in there with a ton of speed and just keep exactly. the pedals moving yeah. and go right up the middle. Um, and that worked pretty well. But like Jeff said, you kind of, the lines changed over the years and you go to the right. Um, where I struggle through there is, especially when you get tired, where you want to be in like an easy, like a low gear, right? Where you can spin up these hills when you get tired, um, but you can't, you can't maintain traction if you're in too low of a gear, your back tire will spin out. So you almost like want to push a larger gear through there at a lower cadence so that you aren't spinning out the back tire. But if you're tired, you can't do that. So it's like a, it's a definite a, a balance. Yeah. I hit 168 heart rate on the top of that, so. The gradient going uphill was uh, 18, 19%. Uh, and the camera angle doesn't, you know, do it any good, but it's really steep. Yeah. And Jeff, what's your maximum heart rate now? 171. So, yeah, so you're, you're, you're right there. I mean, you're pegging, you're pegging it pretty good the whole time. Yeah, yeah. It was enough for my wife watched a section and she was like, I can't watch this because you're breathing. <laughs> like I scared her. <laughs> so we're kind of coming towards the end of this. You get some downhill, you have a little technical rock thing, but now you're starting to think about the big climb back up to the start finish. The, the gulch, you got this little gulch thing coming up too that <laughs> over the years has, has given me some trouble, um, but I, I did manage to, to get through it all, all the four laps that I, that I was there for. Yeah. Yeah, they used to have a photographer right there to capture you uh, struggling on it, but uh, not this year. <laughs> they took mercy on us. So do you feel like the new bike was set up pretty much perfect for this course, Jason? Yeah, for, particularly for this course and for, for what I expect to be a wilderness. Um, I ran it, the suspension really soft. Um, I typically do anyway. Um, I ran the suspension pretty soft, uh, pretty low air pressure. I wanted the, you know, the compliance um, and the, the seated traction and the, the cornering traction of the lower lower pressure, you know, overall with between the tires and the suspension. Um, and, you know, you know, I set it up with a lockout. So I on the road and the steep stuff, I was always able to, I was able to hit the lockout if, if I wanted, but yeah, the bike overall, the setup, I felt worked perfectly for this type of course where there's a lot of, um, just chop on the trail. Right. So here we are coming into the gulch. It's kind of nice. You didn't have any traffic, so you got a clean shot at this. And right. I was able to ride it, no problem. Chuck Norris does a blindfold it, they said. Hmm. Yeah, typically there's like some sort of like lap traffic or something in there, people walking, so you end up walking sometimes. And then it dumps you out right here. And now you know, like this is, this is the time to, this is the place to make up time, right? start motoring and so i drank this is where i was getting fuel i was like drinking you know i probably drank a, a third of my bottle in this area and you know a good portion of my bottle in another area this is where i was like generally trying to get a drink yeah i was hitting about 20 miles an hour back there Do you have uh, people right behind you, Jeff, or? Uh, no, no, at this point, um, I didn't even look back for Nelson, but he didn't, Nelson didn't catch me until the last lap with maybe just a couple miles to go. Um, he did reel me in because I was starting to crack on that last lap, but uh, I rode most of this by myself. 
uh, uh, Stuart did join in because his race started as we were starting lap three. So I had some time with him. Right. You know. Yeah, I, yeah I, I, I wonder what the, the, the photos were. They did, and I thought the XC doesn't start at the same time, does it? But they, they start after three laps. Yeah. Yeah, so all throughout the day, we were kind of running into different people because they would start and then stop, and, and we're still out there going. <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, I was, I was curious how the lap um, traffic would work out because at Grenoble, since it's a it's a private it's private property, private venue, um, we were able to start at eight o'clock, whereas at Challenger, we started at what eight. 30 or 845 or something like I forget what it was. Yeah, Jeff. Um, yeah a little later. So, so we had a full hour on course before anyone else started. And you, you knew that we were going to get around the first lap in 30 some minutes and the second lap, you, you know, you knew you were going to come around. You weren't going to be there for the start of the elite race at nine, but it's all staggered two minute, two minute intervals after that. So I remember going through the grass here at the top and you can see me there a little bit ahead. There's Jason um, right there. So, yeah. so when I looked at this, I, I in the endurance race, planning on being out there for seven or eight laps, I was like, well, I'm going to go to the right, and I'm going to, I'm not going to burn the match that it takes to go up the straight way because that's 400 plus watts up that grass climb to go straight. <clears throat> but when I looked at the data, it looked like of the 35 or so seconds I had on Jeff, he pulled back 15 or 17 of it just here by going straight and taking the hit and going up through the grass. So um, next year, I think if it's dry, maybe I'll go straight instead of around. You see the grade here, 18, 19, 20. Right. And I'm already at 169, 400 watts. And this is in my easiest gear, standing over the front of my bike, Seven, just trying to get. 30, 30%, 32. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. I got 170. Wow. And, you know, we're 30 minutes into a four hour race. So, uh, but it pay, I it was, pay, it pays off, that, right? 15, 16, if, you, if you're <laughs> able to do it, right? And power up that 36%. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I went to the right and kind of kept my power more steady up the climb. Um, and you do get a little bit of a faster run across the top here then from coming from the right there and an opportunity to maybe drink or have a have a gel um but you know it, it, it did it cost me 15 16 seconds so uh i think in, in in the future maybe in the early laps i'll take the grass climb if it's dry um and then maybe you know later in the race if i'm tired I'll, i would go around did, did you take that uh that steep hill every lap every every seven times uh jeff no i was I was almost positive that if I took that, I was going to be ahead of Jason. And when I came up here and I saw him ahead of me, I was just so, <laughs> I was so disappointed. I see him right there. I'm like, oh, I, thought, I thought he was behind me. So I was just like, I'm not doing that again. So that was the only lap that I did. That. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. When, when I was with Stuart, he didn't even try to go up the steep one. He's like, let's just go around. I was like, okay. Um, but when we came around after the second lap, Jeff, I remember I looked and I saw, you know, you started seeing some people on the course and then I saw the, the women were starting, I think, as we were coming around after the, the second lap. And I, I thought that that was almost a little bit of a, a good thing for us because you and I were going to get out in front of on the course and then, you know, Nelson and the other riders would have to have additional lap traffic to get around. And we were kind of ahead of them. Um, and here we are with our TBR tent on the right. Pam was handing out uh, bottles.